Hi, thanks for watching. This video was originally a Facebook Live video that was presented in my Facebook group, Stone Family Farmstead Community. If you'd like to catch these videos in real time on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. PST, you can do that by going to stonefamilyfarmstead.com forward slash community and joining the group. If you'd prefer to just watch the edited versions of these videos here on YouTube, go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button and you should get the updates each week. Thanks a lot. Hey guys, thanks for coming to this week's live. We're on live number nine. We're going to be talking about grow, growing rosemary today. My name's Christy and I'm the owner of this group and the owner and author of Stone Family Farmstead where I teach gardening, food preservation, and homestead planning and goal setting all at the beginner level. I'm really stoked that you're here. I'm happy to be here myself. And um, last week we talked about how to grow free plants from your plant cuttings. And if you want to catch that video, you can go to the group menu. You have to go right to the group page. And in the group menu, you'll see videos and you can catch that video there. Since this is a growing rosemary uh, video, I wanted to share with you that um, I'm part of a collaboration with a couple of friends. We get together each month and uh, tape a what we call an Ask Me Anything video. And what that is, is we put out the question and the feelers out to all of our audiences and ask them what are their biggest pain points or their questions regarding whatever topic that we're going to talk about. And last time, uh, well, the last video that we did went published yesterday on um, YouTube and it was on growing herbs. So I know that you guys would be interested in that. So go ahead and check that out on my YouTube channel, stonefamilyfarmstead.com forward slash YouTube, and you can check that out there. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to talk today about growing rosemary. A couple weeks ago, we talked about growing lemongrass. They're kind of similar in the way that they're grown. Rosemary, rosemarinus officinalis, I think I'm saying that right, is native to the Mediterranean. And rosemarinus means dew of the sea. So it's not a beautiful name. And um, the reason why it's called that is because it grew on the, the warm, sunny hillsides in the Mediterranean right near the sea. So um, that's how Rosemary got her name. So she's a Mediterranean plant, which makes it um, make sense that she grows really well in zone eight and above. You can grow rosemary outside in the ground in those growing zones and you know year round she'll do really well however in zone seven and below you can grow rosemary in the ground but most of the time you're probably going to have to figure out how to either overwinter rosemary or to protect her somehow so if you're in zone seven or below if you have a south facing wall you can uh, plant her there and it'll protect your plant from the wind and the elements and things like that. But the tips of the uh, of the uh, branches, these may freeze. So your mileage may vary on that particular um, piece of advice. You'll have to just see how she does. So rosemary is a really easy to grow plant for most of us that are in zone eights and above. There's three ways that you can grow rosemary. And one of those is starting it by seed, uh, propagating the uh, cuttings, and just basically going to your local garden center and, um, and buying a plant and planting. So if you want to try your hand at seeds, this is probably going to be a pretty difficult endeavor. They're not that easy to, to grow that way. But if you want to, um, here's how you would do that. Okay, so rosemary, um, I've never grown it from seed, but in looking up and researching what the seeds are like, the seeds are tiny. And the way I usually do really small seeds is I will usually take them and pinch them and, you know, just kind of put them over the surface of the soil and pat them in. Now, because these seeds take so long to germinate, you're going to want to start them like 22 weeks before you're ready to transplant your uh your plant into the garden or into a pot or whatever. Um, they take like 15, 15 to 20 days to germinate and they need like almost perfect conditions, like 65 to 70 degrees temperature and they need light to germinate. So 
not all seeds need light to germinate. Many seeds will, they'll germinate without light. And then once they have some greenery on them, then they'll need the light, but not rosemary. Rosemary needs the light. So here's two ways you can deal with that. You can either um, try to sprout rosemary in a grow light box. And I have an article on my blog. Um, just you can go there and in the search bar, just plug in grow light box and you can see what that looks like. You can uh, you can grow or sprout her in there and it would probably keep the ambient temperature right around 65 to 70 degrees um, if you use light, the light bulbs that I recommend. Um, and you can bring you know your uh, tray up within two inches of the light and that should be pretty close to perfect conditions for rosemary. But that's just a guess because I've never done that. The next way that you can grow rosemary is you can propagate your um, cuttings. So if you were going to take a cutting of rosemary, here's like a, a really long rosemary branch, right? And can you see how it's like really light in color here? And then as it gets down here, it gets a little more woody. Okay, you would cut your cutting directly under a node. That's just where um, the leaves are growing. And then you would strip the uh, all the leaves off and then you just put the part with uh, the nodes into some water or into some planting medium. Now, that's just really the quick overview. If you want better instructions, I did that video last week. Oops. I did that video last week on how to get free plants from your plant cuttings, and that has more in-depth information and in all the different ways that you could uh, propagate um, your plants. Um, here is my full disclosure though, is that I did rosemary in some planting medium and it doesn't seem to be working out very well. I'm not really sure why I've got all the conditions right as far as I know, but they're the only ones that seem to be turning brown and maybe rotting, I don't really know. So I'm gonna try it again and uh, propagate in water and then I'll let you guys know which way worked better for me. Hopefully the water will work better for me. So. Propagating is supposed to be really easy. Um, so if you want to catch that video, you can find it in the group video section on my YouTube channel, or if you just want to read the instructions, that's on uh, my blog, How to Get Free Plants from Your plant, plant Cuttings is the name of the post. And you, know, you can just uh, check out the instructions there. So the third way that you can grow rosemary is just to go to garden center and buy it. Now here's my caveat about buying plants that you intend to eat or use in medicine from garden centers. The thing with buying your plants at a garden center is this, is that they spray their plants, you know, in order to keep them bug free and everything and nice looking to sell, they spray those plants with pesticides. So I, I think we all kind of know that. But another thing that they do, and I'm not sure if they do it with rosemary, but my suspicion is they might because it's a perennial and they could have them around for quite a while, but they do it with roses. And what they do is they um, inject the, the soil, I believe this is how they do it. They inject the soil with the pesticide that actually gets taken up through the roots and it becomes part of the plant basically. So that would be like a systemic pesticide. And so the reason why I know that is because I bought three beautiful roses a few months back. And when I started thinking about like how I could use the petals or how soon could I use the rose hips, I started doing some research and realized in my research that um, the half-life for these pesticides can be years. So for the one that they use for the roses, it's like two years. So I know I won't be using my roses for about four. So just make sure to do your research when you're thinking about buying plants from the garden center uh, for, you know, to eat or to use as medicine or whatever. I got mine from the garden center and mine is right now about, I don't know, three, four feet wide. It's been in there for three or four years, so I don't mind using it now. It tastes great, it smells great, and so I'm good with it. But you know, everybody has to decide what they want to do. So if you do buy your plant from a garden center though, this is how you plant it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna work some compost into the top layer and then you'll plant per there. Now, 
some of the things you want to keep in mind is that you want the soil to be um, about between six and seven as far as pH level goes. You want it to be light and well-drained soil, so no clay soil where it's going to pool inside or whatever. And if you were to plant your rosemary plant in clay soil, it would just make a bowl and the water would just collect there and it would, uh, your rosemary plant would probably suffer root rot. She needs full sun. I'll tell you about my plant. My plant is uh, planted in a place where um, she gets morning sun and then the afternoon volatile sun, she's in the shade. And that's probably good for my area because we get like over a hundred degrees, you know, for a couple of months. And so, um, you know, that way she doesn't dry out and all that stuff. But in other places that are cooler than where I live, you know, full sun would probably be fine and probably be beneficial, actually. Some of the pests and diseases that you might see on your rosemary plant would be like white flies, spider mites, scale, mealy bugs. I actually had a few months ago something called spittle bugs. Do you guys know what that is? It's so weird. It looks like somebody just like walked by your rosemary bush and just spit all over it. It's the weirdest looking thing. Shelly, one of the ladies inside of the AMA video collaboration that I do, talked about that. So if you go over to the Growing Herbs video and you watch it, it's at about two minutes, 30 seconds or something like that. And you'll be able to get the answer if you have that issue with your rosemary plant. So couple other things that can happen with rosemary is um, is that it can get mildew and rot and um, you might find actually that some of the instructions for planting rosemary says to plant it like 8 to 24 inches. I would definitely plant it 24 inches apart so that it has a good couple feet you know to grow out but it's a huge plant. And so I would never plant rosemary here where I live eight inches apart. But, you know, again, your mileage may vary. It's different everywhere. So it might work for you there. But here, we would probably get that mildew and that rot. And, and my rosemary plants would be sharing all sorts of pests and diseases that they might have. If you would avoid planting so close together, the good air circulation and the good drainage it's going to be a good safeguard against pests and diseases for your rosemary plant. So if you didn't want to plant uh, her in the ground because you're in seven, you know, zone seven and below and it just gets too cold, um, you can plant uh, rosemary in containers in a lightweight soil mix. And then the cool thing about containers in those zones is that you can just uh, leave the plant outside when it's warm, bring the plant inside during the cold months and overwinter the plant. As far as feeding the plant, I never feed my rosemary plant. Um, I don't even know that I worked composted manure into it. I might have, but I mean, that was years ago. I never feed my plant, but if you want to and you feel like you need to, you can use an all-purpose fertilizer, um, like, you know, the kind at a local garden center with the numbers 444. You know, they need, uh, rosemary needs a moderate amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And so one of those would probably be fine um, according to whatever the instructions are. But if you wanna avoid a synthetic fertilizer, which is probably a good idea for those people that want to um, do everything you know, organically or naturally, um, the problem with using synthetic fertilizers is that once it breaks down, it leaves salt behind, which doesn't leave a good environment for um, growing a good ecosystem. And that's a really important thing, you know, if you want you know, everything to be nice and natural. So instead of using a synthetic fertilizer, you could use something like worm castings to feed, you know, for nitrogen. You could use bone meal for phosphorus. Um, and you can use for potassium, either one of the two banana peel fertilizer um, recipes that I have on my blog. And so um, all you gotta do is go over to stonefamilyfarmstead.com and plug into the search bar banana peel fertilizer and you should probably be able to get the uh, both of them one of them is dry and one of them is a uh, a liquid version so those are some ideas on how to feed as far as uh, mulching you can do some mulching if you want to 
I don't like to do mulching here because I get too many like sow bugs and um, pincher bugs, pincher bugs, not pincher bugs, um, earwigs, I'm sorry. Yeah, they live underneath. And if I have any small plants anywhere near something that I've mulched, um, they're just, they're toast. There's no way that they survive sow bugs and earwigs. So I don't like to use too much mulch because I'm always kind of planting, you know, at different times of the year. But you could mulch, and especially if you're in zone seven and below, you might want to mulch to keep the roots warm in winter. And, you know, if you don't have a problem with sow bugs and earwigs, you can mulch during the summer to keep the roots nice and cool. Harvesting, um, if you're living in zone eight and your rosemary's in the ground, you can actually just harvest anytime you want, anytime you need um, any sprigs of rosemary. So that's what I do. Mine is in the ground. She never dies back or anything. There's always rosemary available. And so I can just clip whenever I want to. If you are living in zone seven and below, or you just don't want the plant there anymore, you can harvest the whole plant and just dry um, the leaves at 95 degrees in a dehydrator. Or you can just uh, take all, all of the you know, branches, tie them together, or maybe if you have too much, you know, do several and um, hang them upside down and just let them dry that way. And then you just strip all of the leaves off of the branches and store them in uh, glass containers with tight fitting lids. And it should last about a year. You can use rosemary in herbal teas, in medicines, in cooking. You can use it in hygiene products. Um, you know, it's really, really a versatile plant. And if you can grow it, you're going to want to. Um, so if you want to cook with rosemary, you can use uh, like the whole sprigs in roast dishes like lamb and pork, beef. Uh, my daughter made up a recipe years ago, um, and we just called it rosemary merlot beef. And it was kind of similar to um, another recipe that we'd seen by Julia Child. But this one was so good. Rosemary Merlot beef. I'll try to share the recipe with you guys once I get it on my blog and we try it again. But because it was a few years back, but it was delicious. Rosemary just made it really delicious. So um, the whole, if you use a whole sprig, the whole flavor of rosemary, if you like it, it just permeates the whole, um, the whole dish that's inside of the roasting pan. And you can use rosemary in soups and stews. You can use it in sauces and marinades. You can use it to flavor vinegar or oil. You can use it in breads. Another way I like to use it is to cube up red potatoes and red onions and um, toss the rosemary leaves with olive oil and just spread it you know, on a sheet pan and bake. It's so good that way. So um, those are a couple of ideas on how you can cook with rosemary. But the medicinal uses of rosemary are abundant also. The properties that she has are antidepressant, antioxidant. Um, rosemary supports the body against arthritis, prevents and fights bacteria, relieves gas and promotes peristalsis, which is you know, important. Um, it supports the loosening of the phlegm and the respiratory system. And it's said to improve circulation to the brain. So um, it's used um, I've read somewhere that it's used, um, and forgive me, I don't have a reference, but that um, it's used for older people who might be losing some of their brain function. In Germany, it's actually been approved to use to treat indigestion and joint problems and stomach problems. And um, I have a recipe where I used it because, you know, I have issues with depression and things like that. Um, I used it as an ingredient in my feel-good tea recipe in my blog post, How to Calm Nerves with Herbal Teas. So um, there's a lot of uses for rosemary. Some of the, um, I didn't write them down, but there are some ways to use it in like hygiene products and like soaps and things like that. And also in um, household products, you know, like maybe if you make your own um, scouring powder or something, you can put, you know, dried rosemary leaves in there. And so there's just a lot of different uses. If you're interested in more ideas for using herbs uh, for medicine, um, Heidi has a course. It's the Confident Herbalist course. 
and it brings all the ways to use herbs for medicine down to a beginner level. And you can start doing it like right away, really, if you're taking the course. And it's a really great one. I'm taking it. I've been taking it for a few months. I'm going through it systematically and slowly. And there's just hours and hours of good information there. So if you're interested in using herbs as medicine, this is the course that I recommend. And if you're interested in growing herbs, don't forget to head over to stonefamilyfarmstead.com forward slash YouTube to my channel and check out my, well, not my, but our Growing Herbs AMA. And I'm going to take a few seconds to go down the list and see if I missed any questions. Okay, so Melinda says, I took a cutting from my mom's cobalt colored flowered rosemary plant last year and it grew roots in water. Now I have a lovely plant for my mom's plant. That's really good to know because it really isn't working very well inside of the planting medium that I tried last week. So I'm hoping that I can propagate my uh, rosemary plant in water better than that. Heidi says, I use it in facial cleansers for teens with acne, good stuff. That's really good to know. Okay, and so that's pretty much about all I had to say about um, Rosemary, thanks for being here, you guys. I'm super happy that you guys are all here, and I'm really happy to do this. It's a lot of fun for me. I hope it's fun for you, too. Don't forget to check out the links that Heidi has posted, and I'm not sure if it's this side or that side, but whatever, you guys can see them in the comments. And if there's anything else that you want to know, go ahead and feel free to keep posting uh, questions and stuff, and I'll get in there and, you know, try to answer them, okay? Thanks a lot for being here, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.